it's happening in every neighborhood. Down every street. Sickness. Addiction. And violence has been turning countless homes into crime scenes. Suffering. Depressed. Alone. Suicidal. God is with you, and this situation of yours is going to change. But this show is here to bring hope to the hopeless, to prove to you that there is a solution. Now, on the air with Bishop Joshua, the showdown of faith. Wake up, America, the spirit of God is with you. And he's the one that is going to bless your life today. Yes, he's going to bless your life today. Today is your day. I'm not talking about your birthday. It might be. But today is the day that God has booked. He has separated in heaven to bless your life. You are not watching one more TV show. You are not watching one more pastor on the TV. Tell evangelist, no, we are here to pass on to you what God has for you. And he is going to bless you, transform your life, change your situation. This situation of yours today is going to change. Today is a new day, a new beginning for you. From now on, you can count on us. Together with me, I have Nori, but also I have the whole team of faith People that are available and willing at this time to assist you. And you know, Nori, anybody, regardless of the skin color, religion, church, anybody can call us. That's correct, Bishop Joshua. Anyone can feel free to call right now and speak with one of the counselors, no matter the problem situation that you're facing. You can pick up your phone and give us a call. That good number that you can dial, 1-888-332-4141. You can give the counselors your name, the problem that you're facing, so it can be placed here inside of the holy oil. You can also feel free to send your prayer request through text message. For those of you who rather text, that number, 1-888-312-4141, where you can also send in your pictures, the pictures of your loved ones. And before the end of the program, that's the good number for the text message, where you will receive a reply back. And before the end of the program, Bishop Joshua will be praying for all of you. It costs to make a living, and that's why you worked hard to obtain a degree but you haven't been able to find a job in your field of study. Frustrated and unaccomplished because you overqualified for the job that you're willing to settle for, you've accumulated so much debt that you wouldn't be able to clear, even if you were to work three jobs. It's like you're stuck at a dead end. It costs to make a living and you don't have the dime it takes. All these problems happen because you are under spiritual attacks. You are under a spiritual oppression, spiritual attacks. And the Lord wants to free you, to set you free once and for all. Nicole had the spiritual problems since she was a kid. Well, I want you to stop whatever you are doing to watch her story, her testimony, because she was under spiritual attack. 
By coming to this ministry, she was set free. See what the scripture says. The word of God is clear. Talking about him, it says he reveals deep and secret things. Things of the past that are hidden and we do not know. He knows what is in darkness. Why? Because light dwells with him. Light dwells with God. And this is the light that shone upon the life of Nicole. I was about six years old. I had an accident in which I was very bullied in school. And that's when I started having a lot of depression. I felt very lonely. I felt very uh, criticized. And that's when things started to happen. I had manic attacks. Um, I had panic attacks as well to the point that I wrote a letter to my family um, to basically say my goodbyes and that they were better off without me because with all of that, I was also very rebellious. Besides the problems that I had personally, um, my family and I, we were going through what it seemed that we were basically homeless. Um, all of a sudden we had two homes and we foreclosed both homes. And to the point that my dad lost his job for about a year, my mom had to take care of um, my entire family. And we didn't have much to eat for, for almost years. And we were going from then on to worse. My grandparents invited us to come to the Universal Church. They knew the situation that we were going through. Um, years of suffering, years of almost basically living in the streets. Um, and from then on that we found out through, we were in another denomination. And even though we were there, our lives was going from bad to worse, to the point we were living through appearance. Nobody knew what was going on behind closed doors. And we were tired of the situation we were living. So we started, we took a step and we decided to visit the Universal Church on a Friday. And from then on, we never left. Everything seemed like it was going well, but I didn't have the Holy Spirit. Then when the pastor said, you can have everything, but if you don't receive the Holy Spirit, then you have nothing. So that was my main focus. I received the Holy Spirit. It was the most amazing um, feeling, the assurance that I was no longer having the panic attacks, the insomnia, the manic attacks, the suicidal thoughts that I would um, have every single day, waking up from the moment I woke up, from the moment I slept, all I thought was taking my life and that was gone instantly. Um, I was at home and I was able to receive the Holy Spirit and have the assurance that I was no longer alone. I was no longer going to suffer with all of those things that I had inside that no one knew. The next step was I wanted to find someone and I was able to, four years ago, I was married. Today I have my own business. We work with, with children with autism, with kids with uh, mental illnesses and it's, it's my dream. I'm able to help others and the things that I was going through in the past and today I am complete. Today I am no longer suffering in my financial life or my mental health or um, in my love life. I, today I am a complete person. I no longer need people to make me happy. The Holy Spirit makes me happy. Whatever you're going through in life, whether it's your financial life, whether it's your spiritual life or anything in life, if you want a way out, the altar is the answer. You think you are going to leave a message. <laughs> this is a joke. A pastor's going to answer me? No way. Let me show them. It's a life helpline. <laughs> Who is going to be willing to answer calls at this time? See right now, are real. You are reluctant to call. You know what? I'm gonna call. Single day. Perhaps it's not like someone is really going to answer. To work, you never call. Hello, this is the Shirt on Faith. How may I assist you? My Lord and my Father, in the name of your Son Jesus, right now, I mean... The Showdown of Faith Helpline is filled with men and women of God, ready to help and assist you. 
So I'm going to make a prayer right now for your family. Please close your eyes. Hi, this is the showdown of faith. How may I help you? When you call 1-888-332-4141, your name and prayer request will be written on a prayer card to be placed inside of the holy oil. The holy oil represents the presence of God. And when your name is submerged in the holy oil, the power of God will begin to work in your life. Call now to have your name and family member's name submerged in the holy oil. 1-888-332-4141. You can reach out to us. We're here for you, to help you. Maybe you say, Pastor, everyone has given up on me. Everyone, excuse me, has turned their back on me. No one believes that I can change. No one believes that I will change. Well, we do. Yes, these men and women of God that you see here with me that are filled with the Holy Spirit, our counselors here, they're here to help you. We believe in you. Give us a call right now. Reach out to us. Our number is here below. You can give us a call and speak to any one of these highly anointed men and women of God. Give us a call, 1-888-332-4141, or you can send us a text message. Also, we have our devices here. You can send us your text, and we're not going to leave you unread. We're going to answer your text message, and we're going to help you spiritually. The number for the text, 1-888-312-312. 4141. Reach out to us because we are here to help you. Yes, it doesn't matter your situation. You can reach out. We're here to help you. And when you do so, we're going to take your name, your information, your problem, your situation. And what are we going to do with it, Nori? We're going to place it here inside of the holy oil. As a matter of fact, I already do have names of those who've reached out already asking for prayer. We do have Charlie. He is asking prayer for his family, for them to be blessed and protected. He's also asking prayer for his finances. We have Mrs. Lori who is asking prayer on behalf of a loved one who is incarcerated. Her husband who is on dialysis, she wants him to be healed. We have Mr. Tony from Washington, D.C. He is asking prayer for deliverance in his life. And we also have Linda from North Carolina who is asking prayer for her family, her finances, and her health. Ms. Linda and those mentioned, your names are here inside of the holy oil, and we will be praying for all of you. Give us a call, send your prayer request through text message. The number for the text, 1-888-312-4141. But if you want to speak to someone, a live person, you can call us to 1-888-332-4141. It doesn't matter how you are, what your pain, or what your suffering is. Jesus Christ is telling you now, speak out, I'm all ears. Speak to me, speak to us. We are here to hear you, pray, advise, and help you. I have someone all the way from Georgia, Mrs. Uh, Johnson. Hello. Hi, how are you doing, Pastor? I am fine, thanks for asking me, and... I am sure you are going to be fine as well. Before we go, we continue our conversation, I have uh, with me uh, Dr. Saul, a man who was involved with witchcraft. Actually, he used to he be used to... A, a witch doctor. Parents, grandparents, siblings, they were also involved with the spirits. Hello, Dr. Saul. Bishop, how are you doing? Good. Let us know, uh, uh, help Mrs. Johnson. Mrs. Johnson, yes. tell me, what do you face in life? What is the problem that is going on? Well, I have a problem uh, with my health, my financial, and my family, and also IRS. So I'm not able to work as much as I used to because I'm sick off and on. I'm supposed to have surgery, but I got kind of nervous. And I'm just going through a lot right now. Mrs. Johnson, how is the family? 
Well, I have two um, grand boys um, that's in prison, never been to jail, just got caught up with their friends. And they're young, and they gave both of them 12 years. So that kind of stressed me. And, you know, with my sickness and my financial problems and my son with the drinking and driving, I've been trying to pray on that. So it's just a lot with me right now. I'm uh, going through. How how old are your grandchildren? Uh, one is not. They, well, they've been locked up about three years now. So the baby boy is about 19, and the oldest one is about 20. And they have never been to jail before. Okay, uh, Doctor Saul. Uh, uh, Miss Miss uh, Johnson, can you give Lori the name of your your grandchildren? My grandson, uh, Kenneth Robertson, Kenneth? and Courtney Evans. Courtney. Okay, Mrs. Johnson, I'm placing your name, everything that you did mention, and your grandchildren's name inside of the holy oil, and we will be praying not only for you but for your grandchildren as well. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Sol, she's from problem to problem. She spoke about these three areas of her life. Three areas. Yes. Health, finances, yes. and the family. Mm -hmm. Yes. Bishop, uh, what, I know, what I know that's happened with her, there's an evil spirit who has been, for the previous generation, who have been destroyed a future generation. So once this evil spirit comes into the, into, the, into the person, he comes to destroy. So in many people, they thought, this evil spirit goes away. So, but there is no way for them, to, there is no expiry date for this evil spirit, unless the person come and, and attend the service of deliverance. That's why we have a day, we have a day, at Universal Church, specifically for fight against the living spirit. Uh, let me ask uh, Mrs. Johnson something. Do you believe in God? Yes, sir. Have I haven't been baptized, but when the pandemic started, the church that I was baptized in closed down. So when I seen you all on TV, by me being in Georgia, I was trying to see if they had a universal church in Georgia because I wanted to start going to it. Yes, we have a church in Atlanta. We are going to give you the address. But you believe in God. You were baptized in water. How many Bibles do you have in your house? Three. Three. So, now, yes. Dr. Saul. I want, to, I want yeah. some clarity here. I want you to clarify to me. She believes in God. She's baptized in water. Uh, Mrs. Jones has three Bibles in the house. But why then these spiritual attacks? And Bishop, just for, just for information, my name is from the Bible. So I have three brothers that their name were in the Bible. Isaiah, look in myself. So, if that we are Christian, but if we are not being delivered from any evil spirit, that evil spirit continues in our life in the future generation. Because we need to uproot the evil spirit who have been control our lives in the past generation. Because I believe in the past generation, people have been done with God. Likewise, like, likewise in my family. My, my grandparents, my grand-grandparents, they, they were born in the house of the doctor. They used to do it. My mother thought, my, pa my father also thought, to, you, to put our names on the Bible, we will be protected, we will be delivered. But not, we are still doing witchcraft. Well, Mrs. Johnson. Hello? Yes. I want you to hear now what is an evil spirit. 
I know that you believe in God. That's why we are talking here, right? Yes, sir. You have the Bible, but the reality is something else. You are under spiritual attacks. And you are not the only one. There are many others, Christians, that believe in God, but they hear voices, somebody calling their names, the bell rings, when they open the door, nobody is there. They think that they are going crazy. Others, the light goes on and off by itself. A person has these horrible dreams. Dream with dead people. Like somebody suffocating or choking during the night. So I want you to listen now. What is an evil force? What is an evil force? An evil force is an unclean spirit that brings sorrow, distress, torment, fear, confusion, destruction, and separation into a person's life. It causes pain and misery. Its ultimate goal is to completely destroy that person's life. A victim of an evil force is often under sudden attacks of irrational obsession, usually leading them to suicidal thoughts. If you suffer from any of these symptoms, then you are a victim of evil forces. Mrs. Johnson. Yes. Did you hear what is an evil force? Yes. And sometimes I do go through depression. I do that. And I just, you know, I have no one but my children and my grandchildren. And I have a sister that stays out there. She, I calls her and she pray with me. And I don't know. I do. I, I be depressed a lot. I do. Uh, Dr. Sol, depression is when the evil spirits, they crashes a person's soul. They oppress from every side. Uh, uh, like she has these problems, health, finances, and the family. So these are the problem that squeezes the soul and causes depression. Yes, and Bishop, we used to say that in the house of the doctor, depression is a, a spiritual attack, and it comes from everywhere to, to attack the mind of that person. So, that and when this evil spirit attacks that person, comes the, the evil spirit starts to develop thoughts in their minds. Evil thoughts, or oh, no one likes you, it's better for you to give up your life, there is no way out for you. That is in one point that an evil spirit attack uh, the person. Depression comes just to finalize the life of the person. Miss Johnson. Yes. We are going to take care of you, your son that has a drinking problem, your children, grandchildren that are in jail. By the way, I want you to stay on the line. We are going to get informations. Our pastor in Georgia, Atlanta, he is going to visit your grandchildren in prison. We do go to prison to visit people. And your family will be restored. This evil will live in your life and you are going to have a better life, better than ever before. All right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, oh God. Yes, it's coming. I'm right now, and I'm just crying. Cause I don't, I, I'm all alone. I don't have No, nothing. you're no longer no. alone. God is with you and me too. You are no longer alone. You can count on us. And God is the one that prepared this conversation of, of us, okay? Between us. Yeah. Stay on the line for me, please. Miss Patricia had similar problems of Mrs. Johnson. Miss Patricia overcame. That's why I said to Mrs. Johnson, right away, your life begins to change today. 
Now she is a different person, a different woman. Maybe what Mrs. Johnson said is just like your life. Similar problems, similar situations. This lady over here is a winner. I will be lonely and I'll be thinking about different things in my life with my children. What's well, not really about my husband anymore because he had passed and how they doing and what they doing. I had one son that was in jail at that time and the other one had had a, a seizure. He'd had a seizure and he was, uh, he had lost his job. He, they couldn't let, he can't work no more. When he lost his job, he lost some of his memories and stuff too. And he can't think, and uh, he said he can't even hardly read no more. I stayed at home most of the time, depressed, and thinking when you be at home and you be depressed like that, you be thinking of all kind of things that has happened in your past. I was switching the channels, like I say, and I switched, switched to, 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 to the pastor, and he said, hey, you, you know how he said, hey, you, you, I'm talking to you. And he said, you didn't get to this channel by itself. God sent you to this channel. I found the number, and I called here and found exactly where it said it was on Elmhurst. And that first Sunday I came, I was, I was, uh, I guess I got the Holy Spirit that day because I was so happy. On, the Holy Spirit would be all happy on the inside and just, just beautiful. You know, you just be, just be thinking of all good kind of things. Well, before when I would read in the Bible, I would, they would be just words. It, I didn't get uh, uh, no understanding out of it. It'd be just words, you know. I kept on reading until I get something out of it and I, I read more now and understand. Since I have come to the Universal Church, I, my life has improved in a lot of different ways as far as cooking and running my household. I can pay my own bills. I can drive. I go where I want to go, I can drive. Depression has been gone, has left me since I've been going to Universal Church. For anyone that has had any problems like I've had, by word about something in the past and stuff like that, you need to get with the Holy Spirit and it, he'll, he'll make you forget all about those things. You ask the Lord to forgive, forgive you and you forgive yourself and it'll vanish. But try and get with the Holy Spirit as much as soon as you can. You see, her life is completely different today. She is a winner, as Bishop Joshua mentioned. And you also can reach that point in your life as well. The first step to take is by calling us. Pick up your phone and speak with one of the counselors. 1-888-332-4141. We have Mrs. Maud who is asking prayer for healing. Mrs. Maud, your name is here inside of the Holy Oil. We have Joshua who is asking prayer for his finances and for his love life. We also have Mrs. Etta who is asking prayer for her daughter, for her to be blessed and protected. Miss Etta and those mentioned your names are here inside of the holy oil we do have miss ashley who reached out through text message ask and prayer for her loved ones she left their names so it can be placed inside of the holy oil we also have mr greg who reached out through text message as well asking prayer for his finances for those of you who want to reach out through text message 1-888-312-4141 but don't allow for the program to come to an end without reaching out for help are you tired of living a life of defeat, humiliation, misery? This situation can change once God's words become a reality in your life. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. God will not allow for you to like anything in your life once you make a vow with Him. Everything will work out for you. Great doors will open in your life. Now, on the Showdown of Faith, a moment of prosperity. Which father will you give to his children or to their children? a piece of stone while they are asking for bread. 
Which father would you like to see their children going hungry? No, there is no father like the real father, the real mother, real parents. They work hard to give the best to their children. No parents want to see their children going hungry or in misery. So God is the same. God is the father. He does not want you to go hungry, to have this miserable life. Many are blaming God. Many are saying God doesn't care. You who are right now inside of a shelter, among people that are not your family members, not even relatives. You are in a motel, hotel, you are not on vacation, you are there, but you know there are evil spirits surrounding you, but now you blame God. You say God doesn't care, God does not support me, God does not help me. He does. He has sent you to me, me to you, to tell you that you can have this green pasture. God is calling you to go to the green pasture. He has the whole green pasture to you. He does not want you to starve. He does not want you to go hungry. He does not want you to have a miserable life. He is our shepherd. And as a shepherd, he promised in his word to bless you. It says, the thief does not come except to steal. The thief, we spoke today about the evil force, the evil spirit. They are the ones that came to steal. Does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. God, it is written here, he wants you to have life more abundantly. That's why he has the green pasture for you. He wants you to eat the best, to dress the best, to live in the best house. So now you are going to sow a seed. A seed offering that is going to bless your life. A seed offering that's going to prosper in you. Do not be afraid. If you believe as I do, call me right now. This is my number. 1-888-691-2291. That is my number. Write it down. Take a picture of this number. Call me right now. You are going to sow the seed. The Lord will prove to you that he wants to bless your life. These people you see over here, they are the pastors, pastors' wives. Yes, they are men, women of God. We will help you step by step on how to prosper. It is safe, it is secure. Go ahead and bless your day. Bless your day. God does not owe anything to anybody. He does not owe when we give it to him, the Lord gives us much more. I am not talking about money. Giving money to the church, to an institution. What I mean say is that plant your seed. Give it to the Lord. Much more he's going to give it to you. Let us watch now uh, the story of Mrs. Mena. She sold the seed into this ministry. Because in this ministry we fight for result. It is given and taken. I don't want you to give once and do not receive the blessing. I want you to give and receive. I remember I was working as a waitress and I have a degree in accounting so I always dream to, to have a, a office and computer and you know something but not the restaurant because I feel it's, it's not that the restaurant job is no good, but I feel like I can do something if I was, you know, have that opportunity, but you know, it was hard for me. So when I come to Universal Church, I learn how to soil my seed. When I work in the restaurant, I was very tired and I deny my rest. And I come to the service and I keep fighting and cut keep looking for an opportunity and he opened the door. God, if you give me this kind of job, I want it to be no 
uh, farther than five uh, minutes from my house because if I cannot pay the taxi or I don't have no ride, I can walk. And I specified that. And so right now I just laugh because God is like that. You have to specify, you, know, you have to know how to ask. So three months later, I received an opportunity in this big company to become a customer service and a secretary there in a human resources with my office, with my computer, in a six minutes from my house. After that, of course, my income was different. I have opportunity to provide for my kids. Like I said, I have opportunity to provide for my parents. I knew a lot of people from the restaurant that I used to work, so they become, um, you know, in, in the business that I started working, it was a customer service and they have a retailer. So I kind of bring these people through the market and I start doing uh, little sales just for me. So that increased my income. And it was just God because he connect everything. He prepared everything, but I have to do my part. I wasn't driving, I come with ride and now I, I I'm in my own car. It's important to make um, challenges with God and it's very worth it because He's always there. Uh, sometimes you think or you feel kind of scared because like I say, the money is important, but He has so many things to give you. And the only thing is like you have to fight yourself. You have to really put um, effort yourself. The things are not gonna come easy, but when you include God in your plans, then God will make it happen. So it's important that our faith keep, um, you know, keep working on our faith, keep um, putting it in process our faith, keep doing our campaigns, keep, you know, be good with our offerings, with our tithes, because if we don't do nothing, so how we can even ask? I learned how to soil my seed, and that's what I've been doing since then. She said something very important. When you include God in your plans, you prosper. Include God in your plans. The top list. Have a partnership with God. I give it to the Lord. The Lord gives to me. Let me show to you once again the number. That you can call right now. Bless this day. Bless your day by giving. one 691 Lord, tell us what is the best way. For a person to send the offering, the seed, or return the tithe by the letters. Well, the best way to do it when you're doing it by mail is to check or money order. For security purposes, you never want to send in cash. When you do send in your seed, your donation, whether through check or money order, always make sure it is written under the Universal Church, just as you see it on your screen right now. The address that you can post it to, 7075 Southwest Freeway, Houston, Texas, the zip code 77074. But for more information, you can always feel free to speak with one of the counselors there in our helpline. They'll be more than glad to guide you step by step as well. This is the same Bible that I read. The study Bible. The study Bible took four years to be ready. It was not just uh, written, prepared uh, out of the blue overnight. No. This Bible here has the commentaries of Bishop Macero. It has the studies for a better understanding when you give your donation. Suggest donate of 113, you give this offering and the Lord blesses your life. You are going to receive a Bible over there. This Bible we donate in prison. By the way, by the end of this month, I am going to be in prison. The inmates will be graduated. They are going to have their graduation. We are going to give the diploma, the certificate. But we are going to give a Bible. Only here in Texas we are in 12 units, 12 prisons here in Texas. And we need your help to help those who are in prison. One of these Bibles that you are going to donate will be taken to prison. Leather cover, uh, big size letters, the words of Jesus in red. So go ahead, call us. Sow a seed of 113. By giving, you are going to bless someone in prison. How many Bibles can you afford? 
today, how many? One Bible, you are going to save one prison. One prison and the prisoner. Two Bibles, three Bibles, or perhaps you can donate 10 Bibles. You can leave a donation of 1,300. You are going to help us to save the prisoners and help the units, the prison. So call right now and sow this seed for one Bible. 1-888-691-2291. Become a sponsor, donate a Bible, and save a prisoner. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Become a blessing in the life of a prisoner by donating one of these quality leather-bound New King James Version Study Bibles to be given to inmates around the country. The study notes at the bottom of each page were compiled by Bishop Adair Macedo, making each chapter easier to understand, especially for those who are new to reading God's Word. If you would like to give the Word of God to a prisoner, here are two different ways to do it. Give us a call at 1-888-691-2291 to pay by card or send a check or money order to the Living Faith Network, 7075 Southwest Freeway, Houston, Texas, 77074. This gift offering of $113 will cover publication costs as well as shipping and handling. Sow your seed to bless others in need and become blessed in return. Yes, they need the help, and the Universal Church has been helping those who are in prison. Let me go to the line, uh, Dr. Saul. We have Miss uh, Angelina, also from Georgia. Hello. Hello. Miss Angelina, God will bless your life. Your life begins to change today. Tell me, what is going on? What are the problems that you are facing? I'm facing being evicted from my apartment with nowhere to go, no money to um, find another place, or no money to even put my stuff in storage. Um, my health is not that great. I have high blood pressure. I'm diabetic. I have high cholesterol. I have a um, disease called pulmonary hypertension where your lungs don't get enough oxygen. And you have to be on oxygen to make sure you get enough oxygen in your lungs. And I'm just really down right now because, I, like I said, I've been evicted. And it's really not my fault, but I'm being evicted because the landlord is pretty much mad because my apartment caught on fire in April. And he asked me, did I have any fire insurance? And I didn't. So, therefore, he wanted me to pay him for the fire damage, but... I didn't have any money to pay him. So now he's he's at a point where he can retaliate against me for that reason. And me and my neighbor had an argument, and I called the police. And because I called the police three times, he put me out. Uh, Dr. Saul, another yeah. person uh, with a lot of problems, from problems to problems, finances, yeah. eviction, uh, health as well. So, when the evil spirit enters one person's life, he leaves, he gives no peace. No peace, Bishop. And you know, uh, once an evil spirit enters, as yes, the Bible says, eh, he comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. So, it, the evil spirit comes one, uh, one problem after a problem. The, the evil spirit of uh, sickness and the evil spirit of misery. So the evil spirit of misery, Bishop, is an evil spirit that comes to destroy the life of the past completely. Okay, to make in, the, in the house of the witch doctor, uh, according to your experience, tell me about your experiences. When someone wants to destroy somebody else's life, doing witchcraft, which are the areas, the life of a person that most they target? Finances and family, Bishop. Finances and family. Yes. When yes. somebody wants to destroy a, another person's finances, what do they do? Uh, usually, they take their own money 
and they do witchcraft. They offer up that money to one evil spirit. And that evil spirit is entering in that person's life and it's trying to take you from there day after day until they end up becoming homeless. In her life is like a roller coaster because she lost the place, no money to put her stuff, like the storage, and problems everywhere. So it can be an evil spirit, little by little destroy her life. Bishop, this is an evil spirit because we, uh, in our house, we used to face situations like that. Misery. When an evil spirit of misery come in the house, make that person become homeless. My, in, in my father's house, we used to eat the food from the dustbin for many years, left over from the other people. So what is that evil spirit was entering into our house? And but Bishop, we, we used to go to church. We used to pray. Every day we used to pray. My mother, my daddy, we used to pray together every day. But and the evil was in the house, control our house, misery, poverty, until we lost everything. Lost everything. 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 Okay. We are going to pray for you in a few. But I want you to listen now what misery is all about. Stay on the line, do not go away, because we are going to pray in a few. Misery is one of the worst evil spirits in the world. Bad living conditions. Failure in business. Not knowing where your next meal will come from. Having a broken family. All of those things are signs of misery. Misery has been affecting people's lives for centuries, since the beginning of time. Not everyone is ready to overcome misery. Some people turn to drugs, others turn to the streets, and others are just lost trying to find an escape. But instead, they just make their situation much worse, allowing misery to be in more control of their lives. Once misery enters a person's life, it doesn't matter where that person goes. If they decide to move to the most wonderful place on earth, misery will still be in that person's life. If something is not done, you could live in misery for the rest of your life. How much longer are you going to live in misery? Miss Angelina. Yes. This miserable life will come to an end. He said I came to give life more abundantly. You need abundance in your life. For now, you have this miserable life. Misery is a curse. However, prosperity is a gift. And the Lord wants you to prosper and to have a blessed family. All right? Okay. Stay on the line, we are going to get more information from you, and in a few, I am going to pray. God bless you. Thank you. Every Friday in this ministry, we have the spiritual purge. A spiritual purge, you need to be purged. Yes, purified from this evil spirit. If we stay here the whole day, we are going to talk to people just like her, just like you that are under spiritual attacks. So every Friday, the spiritual purge at every universal church. The Friday of Spiritual Purging. To purge means an intense cleansing, to rid yourself of an unwanted quality, condition, or feeling. What are the unwanted problems in your life that seem to have no end? Spiritual attacks, depression, seizures, Fear, suicidal thoughts, insomnia, constant headaches, paranormal activities, undiagnosable diseases, addictions. If you can relate to any of these, your life needs to be purged by God himself. The Bible records an urgent prayer that pleads with God. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. 
Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. This Friday, hyssop that is dipped into blessed water will be sprinkled over you for God to purge all curses and negativity from your life. Spiritual purging, a deep inner cleansing. Don't miss this powerful meeting at 7075 Southwest Freeway, Houston, Texas, 77074, and at every Universal Church. Uh, Dr. Saul, you are going to be in Baltimore. Yes, Michel. So, 3339 Green Mountain Avenue here in Baltimore. Also at every Universal Church in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening. In Houston, Texas, 7075 Southwest Freeway. We are going to be doing the spiritual purge this Friday for your deliverance. 7 p.m. is the main service, but we have 8 o'clock in the morning, 10 in the morning, 4 in the afternoon. 7 p.m., the night of deliverance, spiritual purge, 7075 Southwest Freeway. Trayvon came to this ministry for deliverance, financial problems, but now this person is completely free. Trayvon, what was the problem? Well, my main problem was I had depression. It all started um, back when... Uh, about five years ago, I was going through a financial problem, an emotional problem with the family, of course. Um, it was so much that was going through my head. It was like suicidal thoughts. It took me a while to rethink and recap all to a point where uh, I had to be at a hospital to reevaluate because I was in a 5150 um, evaluation and it didn't look good for me at all. When I came into the church, had the blessed water, and everything started to be crystal clear right now. When, when God touched me through the heart by drinking that blessed water, that was a mutual change. That right. was like a huge game changer for me. How are you feeling now? Very blessed, Bishop. No more depression? No more depression, no more suicidal thoughts gone in the name of Jesus Christ. Free. Free. Great is your faith. We are approaching the moment of the prayer, but I do have more names to be placed here inside of the holy oil. I did write down Miss Angelina's name. She spoke to Bishop Joshua not too long ago. Your name is here inside of the holy oil. Mrs. Betty, she is asking prayer for her loved ones to be set free from addiction. And we also have Miss Paulette, who is asking prayer for total healing, Miss Paulette. And those mentioned, your names are here, and we will be praying for all of you. But right now, you can prepare yourselves. It is the moment of the prayer. Bishop Joshua will pray for all of you right now. <music> Prayer is our communication with God. You watched the testimonies. You heard the word. But now, please close your eyes and prepare for the moment of prayer. In life we have so much pain. Amen. Close your eyes. So much pain, so much problems, agony, depression, anxiety. This person is like in the midst of a flood. A flood that is dragging everything away from her. She's losing everything, my Lord. Yes, losing everything. Losing the self-esteem. Losing the house, the family, husband, family members. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ, Mrs. Johnson, pray with me right now. I ask you to set her son free from alcoholism, her grandchildren from prison, heal her body, Mrs. Angelina, and all those who called us for help. Enter this life, my Lord. Enter this body. You did enter the life of uh, Peter's mother-in-law, you remove the fever, 
but you also brought Lazarus back to life. O oh Lord, enter this life, enter this person who is in prison, this person that is completely lost in life. You are the only one that can change and transform. Bless this cup of water. Let this person drink of this water and be blessed. In the hospital, in prison, nursing home, in jail, bless their lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Regardless of the color of your skin, your education or level of education or lack of education, God does, does not see anything. His arms is wide open for you. You may drink this water, be blessed over there. Tomorrow again, I'll be back with one more showdown of faith. We open up. With open arms. Jesus is waiting. Come as you are. Come as you are. Now hesitate. Subscribe now to our YouTube channel, Showdown of Faith TV, and tune in Monday through Friday at 5 a.m. Central Time, 6 a.m. Eastern, to watch a show of less talk and more power that teaches you how to fight against your problems with life transformation stories, prayers for you and your family, and a word of faith. What are you waiting for? Subscribe today and don't miss any of our programs.